But the second time, since the cancer came back, everything was like two times harder. And I had no idea about that. I was like, oh no, I don't want to do any of this. I was like, no, I don't want to do this. This is not fun. This is no beast mode. This is not it. I don't want this. Why did I, did I really wish this upon myself? Because this is horrible. Um, it was tough. You finished your treatment in November of 2014. So you were probably told in 20, in 2015 that you were done. Is that right? I, I know I had to keep doing the like CT scans for the first two years, every six months. And then after that, every, once a year. So like I was done with it, but I guess at the same time, like, I still had to like go back. And it was good because every time you go back, you confirm you don't have anything. Like, oh, confirm I don't have anything. Like, yeah, I'm going to show the doctor again that I don't have anything. And that, that, that became like my game. Like I'd like, show the doctor every time that I had, that I was good. I don't know if you've heard of the term scanxiety, but it largely applies to like, I don't know, anxiety about before scan, getting the, like the results, but also any results for you. I'm hearing you made a game of it and you were like, cool. I have to go in in another six months. That's my opportunity. Can you describe more of how you came up with the game and what that did for you? Yeah, I like being the odd one out. Like I, I liked, I, I don't know. I think it's a part of my mindset that I was like, because we have the odds, right? We have like the odds of this percentage. And this. Per I always try to put myself in the best percentage. So like I'm there with the good guys, you know, like don't put, don't even, but recently I've, I've fallen into the, when I relapsed, I've fallen into the bad category, but you can't win them all. So I always try to put myself in the, in the positive, uh, you know, like the, the life expectancy or whatever. And I, you know, we try to make the, I, I, play, I played myself as a winner before I win. So it's okay. Like, I just believe in it and I just say it and I just believe in it and I just say it. I don't have too much doubt. I don't have doubt. I just, uh, it's, I don't know. It's just like natural. Just like, I don't, I try not, I don't know. I just try not to think about it. I just think of like, you know, it's going to be, a, this is, you know, next page, next page, next page. So you, thank you for sharing that. And you were able to go on that two and a half year, like trip around the world. You did have to go back to, to Florida to do the check-ins. Um, in 2020, first of all, the world's about to shut down in 2020, but you, um, you started feeling some symptoms and this is after you actually did get COVID, right. Or maybe just right after what were those symptoms again, that you started to feel? Oh, so I started feeling night sweat, uh, a little bit of night sweats, but what God was getting me was the scratch, like the itchy, like most like in the back and like just getting scratchy and itchy during the, oh my gosh, just, just by saying it, I get itchy, but, um, but when I was working, I started working out, I started like getting itchy, but like, I think that's also normal for some people. So don't get, don't get, don't freak out if you have this. Um, and that, that you was said you also it. felt a, one lump. Oh yeah. So then I also felt like I had a lump here at the base of my neck. And when I had a, I, it was funny because it was like down, down below. So only I could really feel it. And I, and everyone, all the doctors was like, oh, this is nothing. No, don't worry about it. No, don't stress about it. I said, guys, I'm like, you know, I don't have the best history. So I, I think I should get this checked out. <laughs> and then um, I insisted, I insisted so much that I ended up get you know, I ended up doing the biopsy, um, which is great because I, what I realized was the sooner I found out that it's something or it's not something, uh, the sooner I can, you know, be a piece or I can get, you know, tackle what I have to tackle, which is super important because time is everything. Um, we have a lot of, you know, there's some people who unfortunately they pass away from Hodgkin and not Hodgkin lymphoma because they simply, I think sometimes they might be in a denial. They might think that it's nothing. They might, you know, they might push it off. Um, I might be scared, but you know, that's, there's, that's, there's no excuse for that. You got to tackle it, you know, as soon as it appears. Right. Right. No, to take care of yourself for sure. Um, so finally you, you did, you did get it checked out again. Um, 
did the doctors immediately after after hearing your history they well they said get an ultrasound it was suspicious so then you had another excisional biopsy done by the way as this is going on what's going through your head because like six years ago five six years ago you'd just gone through this like i thought i thought it was i knew it was like i knew it but i didn't like i was in doubt like at that moment like i I, I no longer am playing the positive game because I'm thinking like, okay, now, now I'm screwed. Now this is it, you know, like I'm, I gotta have to, I'm gonna have to do this again. It's like, oh boy. I was like, all right, let's do it. Like, you know, so that was going through, that, that, those are my thoughts. It's like, all right, if it is, it isn't. If it isn't, it isn't, you know? What did it feel like when you actually heard officially? Like, so you were like, oh, this probably is it. And then when you finally heard definitively. But I'm crazy. I think I smiled because I was like, oh boy. In my mind, I was like, let's like LFG, like, let's go. I was like, let's go. I remember, I remember that he told me my, my, my wife, my girlfriend, I wife, um, like fiance at the moment, she would start like crying, like breaking down. And I was looking at the guys like, let's go. Like, let's do this. Like, when do we start thinking that, you know, also that the first, this, this type of treatment was going to be the same as the first time treatment, which I, I didn't lose my hair. It had some mouth sores and, and it wasn't so bad. But the second time, since the cancer came back, everything was like two times harder. And I had no idea about that. And like the beast mode on in my mind. I was like, beast mode, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's kill this. Let's kill this bug. Cause I, I, I think oh, I forgot to say that, but in the beginning, in the first, when the first time I got, I got, I was diagnosed, I considered it like as a bug. So like I considered it and my dad put that in my mind as a bug. It's like, you have this bug and like, you have like, um, like a software up, like update, like you have like, give it like a bug in the program and you need to like kind of fix it, just get the bug out. So like, that's the way I thought about it. It's like, all right, let's just kill the bug. Like just like do an update in the software and get this bug out. So same thing again, it was like, let's kill the bug. And that's it. The can- for me, cancer was a bug, but I just kept, I, I just called it a bug. Yeah. I like that. I like it. it. Mentally, it gets you in a place where, you know, you're like, I got this. I know exactly what to do. Just, you know, software update and we're good. Um, and, and so the doctor then did describe to you, okay, we're going to do ice. Um, was it three cycles of ice? And then, uh, and then said, you're going to do a transplant. It would be an autologous stem cell transplant. Yeah, that's where everything, I was like, oh, no, I don't want to do any of this. I was like, no, I don't want to do this. This is not fun. This is no beast mode. This is not it. I don't want this. Why did I, did I really wish this upon myself? Because this is horrible. Um, it was tough. But overall, I think I just, I just had to, you know, keep pushing forward and just keep doing it. And thank God I had my, 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 my future wife who was next to me pushing me all, all the way through this. And, and I really did it alone in a way. I, I didn't want to really push, you know, I didn't want to, like put this weight on anybody in my family. So, and I think, I guess it's more of my style to do that, you know? Talk to me about that. What thought was going through your head about not wanting to put weight on your family? I was lucky. I have uh, one, two, three, four, I had like four little brothers and sisters. So I was like, you know, I'm lucky. And I always thought about, and I always think about the other, the other perspective, right? So I think like, I'm, I was the selected one and it could have been my mother. It could have been my dad. It could have been my grandmother. It could have been my uh, little brother. It could have, anybody in my family could have gotten cancer, but it was me. And I think the way that everything played out was perfect. Cause if I, I got cancer and I fought it because I was healthy and I was strong and I beat it. If it was someone else, it could have been my mom. I think it would have like destroyed the whole family. If it was my little brother, destroyed the whole family. So, so I always think about that. I was like, oh, I'm, you know what? I'm the lucky, I'm, I'm, it was meant to be, it was supposed to be me. I'm the chosen one and that's it. And <laughs> I'm in awe of your energy. I mean, I think it's so wonderful that you're able to like think this way. And, and so I know, okay, going back to this treatment, you were like, your doctor's like, all right, we're going to do ice. You've not done this before. How did he or she describe how different this would be? Yeah, so they, they, so when the doctor told me that I had to do ice, he explained to me that it was going to be much more intense, that I was for sure going to lose my hair. He told me, you know, you're going to have to put, you have to put a port, you're going to have to do all this stuff. And I was like, oh my goodness, this is going to be, this is going to be a little bit more different. Um, so, but other than that, uh, my mindset was still, was still the same. You know, let's, let's shoot, like, like, let's prove everybody wrong. Let's, let's not lose your hair and all this stuff. And I actually didn't lose my hair until the second, after the second set cycle. And also we had this whole COVID thing going on. So it was like, it was a lot, it was a lot, a lot more annoying. Cause I had to keep doing like COVID exams before going into the hospitals, stuff like that. So it was, it was just, but it was all good. It was okay. I, I, I really, I really, I really can't complain. 
Um, and so with the ice, the hair fell out, any other side effects you felt that you want to talk about? Um, the nausea was what got me the most, um, that for me, but again, I'm really lucky. I sailed around the world for two and a half years. Think of a person who's used to having nausea because the boat's always moving. So I, I was so used to it. So like, I thought like, like, this is what it could be worse. Again, I was thinking positively. Um, but that was, that was the, one of the worst things that I, that I felt was the nausea and also the a little bit different from the other treatments from the other treatment was that I had to go into the hospital and stay there for five days. So I would go into the hospital, stay there, like check in, do the ice treatment for like, I think it was like three to five days. And then I would check out. So that was horrible because I also have to eat the hospital food. And that itself is like, it's a whole, it's tough stuff. So, so, so yeah. And dealing with people coming in your room all the time. And um, it's a little bit of a, there, I started kind of feeling, I think the effect of the whole, almost as a prisoner. And I think that's one of the most, I think that's one of the toughest things that I think I felt when I, when I, wow, I feel that now when I felt when I was in, when I was doing the chemo, when I was doing the transplant also later, later on, I was, I was in the hospital by myself for 21 days and nobody could go in with me because of COVID protocols. I would look out the window. And I remember I was like, man, you guys are lucky people are like waiting to sit on the bus stop like you guys are lucky you guys wait for the bus i would get on a bus to wait for you know i was like you can do whatever you want you can stop and get an ice cream you can do you know whatever you want and i'm stuck in here i can't do anything i think that's one of the biggest those are the big that's the biggest you become a prisoner and you didn't do anything wrong that's okay. tough now that you've talked about it after the ice um you did end up uh, going in for a transplant the next month. So this is 2020, you finished ICE from September through November of 2020. In December, actually it says Christmas, 2020 was the actual transplant. Um, before we talk about the actual transplant, can you talk about the like the preparation beforehand? Yeah, uh, a blur again, a blur. I, I, don't, I don't know why I don't focus so much on like all these all the details, but I remember that I had to get my, like this so like certain like, like blood cells had a go up like in you know there's there was things that i had to get leveled out there's like i had to do injections i had to do a bunch of things they had to take out blood like they had to install another port like a port a different port that had like two exits it was horrible um it was really bad i don't i don't think anybody likes the whole feeling of surgery and all that but i just can't I, I just, at, the, at those moments of surgery i started learning to come at kind of at peace with myself like kind of like accepting certain things like not death itself but like you know i'm just like you know this is it like just by yourself kind of take it easy just life is so we complicate life so much you know we do <laughs> we do Why? i know i do <laughs> um so so then okay the actual transplant what do you remember of it i know a lot of the stuff is is after because you have to be by yourself so you you got the it was an autologous stem cell transplant meaning you donate you as your own cells so they had to take out your own cells right they they saw like a port they 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 connect up to like a machine they filter your blood, um they collect like a bag of 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 your own uh, stem cells yeah stem cells they freeze that they send you home um then you come you know you come in back to the to the hospital then you do like official check in and then that's when they give you high doses of chemo pretty much shut down your your immune system that and that's what everybody gets scared about but. Again, I just put my stuff there with the lucky one. Like nothing can go wrong here. It's going to be good and let's do it. And then, um, so when I got the high dose of chemo um, and my immune system fell, I had like some, I, I actually, this was actually during Christmas and New Year's. So I was kind of like in the, the really happy, I guess. I, oh my, my, I don't have, do I have pictures? I have, my whole room was decorated with Christmas stuff. I got presents before. It was, I made it a whole thing. Because I'm spending Christmas in here, I might get a whole thing. Um, so, so that was that was that was um, my my perspective. I had a nice room. I mean, I was blessed. I had everything. I had everybody treated me really, really well. I couldn't. I really can't complain. Um, what did happen was that after I got high doses of chemo, I started feeling really sick. Like I started kind of getting really bad. I thought I was gonna die. I actually had an infection in my like my stomach. I guess like a, a simple bug that any anybody would get uh, for a person who doesn't have any immune system. Like it 
it completely just threw me off. So I was, I ended up taking like four or five days of adrenaline in the, in the ICU until like my hope, until my pressure stabilized. Cause it was, it was completely unstable. Um, and then I spent, I think I spent new years in the UCI. That was interesting. Okay. In the intensive care unit, right? Yeah, I see you. Yeah. I see you for it. And so, um, and that was after the, the transplant. No, that was before the transplant after the high dose chemo. That was, I was, I was checked in the hospital. I was doing the, I was doing the high, do, yeah, I was doing the high dose chemo because there's a period, right? So like they give you high dose of chemo, they give you your, your blood back to get it, like to get things going again. Cause you're pretty much, you're pretty much dead. Um, so when, when, I, when I was like pretty much dead, that's when I had some type of like complication I, while, as I was waiting for the, for the, for the, for the bone marrow to start back up again. And then, um, then you were in the hospital for overall 21 days, you said? Yeah. Overall 21 days. Not so bad. But, but overall you have to be, it's like a hundred days for right. Where you have to protect your immune system and you have to stay away. Can you talk about that? I left the hospital and then it was like pretty much, um, it was, it was, it was kind of good that COVID was kind of about around. Cause I guess everybody was already used to not going out and all that stuff. So I was home for 21, like for a hundred days. And I just, you know, there's a bunch of things you cannot eat. You know, you can't have your favorite foods. For example, my favorite is like having sushi and like, you know, seeing my friends. I can't do any of that. Um, what else I couldn't do? I think that was it. Like I couldn't go near animals or something. I think there's a few things like that. Like, vegetables along with like hard skins certain, certain things that you can't eat um that was you know really pretty intense the intense chemo the staying in the hospital the having to stay away from people all those things um it was tough that part was tough when he told me that i had to do all these things i was like ah oh. um there was some like you know, I had a, I was having some problems with uh, health insurance. Like they didn't want to cover me. They denied my health. I have a health insurance denied me because I was previously, I previously had uh, cancer. So they were trying to like kind of put me into kind of like this kind of like square where I didn't, they didn't have to cover me. So that was a bit of a, of a dilemma. Can you describe like the first time you saw what that premium number was that like what you'd have to pay even with insurance? Yeah, I think I had to pay, like I was paying, like my mom was paying insurance. I think the premium, like I think you had to pay up to five thousand dollars out of pocket, right? So once you hit that five thousand dollars, everything over that was okay. But um, but I still had to pay five thousand dollars out of nowhere. It's like I don't, you know. So I, I I started looking for help online. Thank God, there's a lot of you know a lot of places you know you can find you can find help. And one of the places was the LLS Foundation. And they, they were able to help me. I, I asked for help and they were able to help me with direct payments directly to the, the oncologist or to the, to the hematologist um, at the moment. And it was super helpful. I, I, I didn't know what it was like to receive that kind of help. Like I literally, when I got like, cause I, I was asking help kind of like to LS and like, to, I think some other places. And I don't know if I got responses or not. I remember if there was, there was no funds or funds, but I just remember them and then getting letters saying like, you were approved and I was like, what? It's so cool. Like, oh my God, this actually happens. And I was so like touched because, you know, I didn't know that this, this help existed. And, and I, and I, did, I didn't, I didn't feel so alone at that moment. I was like, wow, people is actually, you know, people actually want to help. You said you got really emotional that day. Yeah, super. I, could, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I never felt that before. I didn't see that. didn't know people help because you see things that people help and this kind of stuff, but like, you know, it, it really only helps when you like it can directly help you. You, you actually mentioned that it was so, it was so touching for you that day that you, you cried that day when you found out, right? Yeah. Yeah. I cried that day and I did, cause I didn't know that people would give out money like that. I, I really didn't know. And I, and I, and after that, I felt like I didn't want, I also started donating cause I didn't want people to go, you know, to think, I didn't want anybody to get, get a note saying that they were denied or they didn't have, there wasn't enough funds to, for them to get money. So I was like, man, you know, whatever I can do also to help other people. And I, and I donate like $25 a month. This is nothing. Um, it's something, but it's like symbolically it help, can help a lot of people um, and make sure that, that they never get that note saying, sorry, that, you know, there's, I think I got one of those notes from one of the, one of the, one of the companies like, sorry, there's no funds at the moment. Can you know, try again later? And I was like, man, you know, it's tough for somebody, you know, who, who has no, you know, who has no condition to, to pay. It's tough to share 
a, a tip for somebody. I think everybody's so different, you know, and, it, and I think it, it, sometimes people can look at me and say, oh, it's easy for him to say that or something. But it's really not. It's just a mindset. I think it's just a mindset that you have to just like kind of like you have to find out what you have to fi find out what you what makes you tick. Right. And you got to you gotta, once you find that. But most people can't find that even even without a, a huge health problem, you know. Most of us are still figuring it out, but I mean, try to, <laughs> try, I don't know, it's tough. I think just try to, you know, try to hop on something that you're passionate about. So, and so after your transplant, um, you then ended up undergoing um, brentoximab, vedotin, which is et cetera, um, over a, a period of one and a half years, you said. So what, what was that like? Horrible. Because you think you're done, you think you're done, but you still have to keep going back, like and do these checkups and do, do these. The side effects uh, immediately are not so bad. So like you go there, you do, you know, you do, you do the the application, and then you go home. Everything's good. You think everything's okay, but the problem is after, and this is super important. And I and I and I and I, and I wish I can get this out to more people. Right after, like it's a, the, the, the medicine is a, 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 cumul, a, a cumulative, how do you yeah. say that? Like cumulative, cumulative medicine, right? So you won't, my doctor said like, Oh, are, are you able to hold your phone? Are you able to like hold your fork and your cup? And I was like, yeah, why is this going to like, so like, no, no. If you, if you start dropping things, if you start falling, I'm just like, doctor, I'm going to start falling. She goes, yeah, you might start falling. Okay. Well, um, until I was about a year into it, then I started really understanding what she meant. Like I started falling, I wasn't, I wouldn't, ha I didn't have enough uh, strength in my my knees. I guess it felt like it was my knees. I started losing a lot of muscle, um, and and that was one of the biggest side effects. And then until I realized that I couldn't even go up a flight of stairs, that was really bad. It was really bad. Um, and what she told me also was that normally people don't finish the dose, like the, the, the like they give you, they give like a one like it's a two year thing. People normally don't finish it, so. And I thought I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna finish it. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not. I had side effects. I could, you can't feel your fingertips. It's like, oh, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not gonna say anything. Like, ah, oh, it's not bothering me that much. It's okay. Until like it just got really bad. So then, um, at the beginning of the year, I was diagnosed with polyneuropathy, and that just meant that I, you know, I had nerve damage in my hands and my fingers. I mean, my hand, my fingers and my hands and my legs. Um. So then I had to just kind of go full, full on to the. Physio physiotherapy and just again I, I, I couldn't walk I couldn't go up the stairs I couldn't do anything I was pretty much like it was horrible I was like pretty much a child again couldn't do anything so then I just revamped and I, I just kind of focused on my energy and I did physiotherapy I was I started swimming classes started physiotherapy every day thank god I just you know poured all my resources into that because I knew I had a window and if I missed that window that I would take longer for me to recover. So that I have a like, if I have a year to kind of get back on track. So they, um, in, ter in terms of talking to the doctor, when you finally did say, okay, it really is getting really bad. I can't even go up the stairs anymore. Um, all these kinds of things. He or she said, we can reduce the dose or we'll stop it early. So she said, oh, we can reduce the dose. And I said, okay. And then, but then she realized that I was pretty bad. That I was like, she's like, we should stop. She's actually, they actually, they actually stopped the dose. They, they told me to go in the hospital to do like a full check to make sure it wasn't anything else. Um, but it was obviously the medicine because they did, they ran all the tests. Again, some tests that I didn't ever ever wanted to do, like the one in the spine. So spinal tap. Spinal tap. Yeah, there's nothing wrong there. So it was, it was actually the medicine, um, and that was it. So just cut. Let's say let's cut off the medicine and let's see how you recover. Um, and based on how you recover, we'll see if we go back with medicine or not. So, uh, cut the medicine. I started recovering really well because I started doing everything I could in my power. And then that's it. And I saw the doctor and she said, okay, no, you know what? Let's not do anymore. And I said, okay, fine. Sounds like a deal. Did they do like a PET scan or anything to confirm that you are no evidence yeah, yeah, yeah. of disease? Yeah, I've done, I've done a few PET scans. So I did one last year and last year already was pretty much clean. And then again, I did one in the beginning of the year, clean. And I'll probably do one again, right, in a few a few months and clean. How does it? Um, do you still have that same mindset of yeah, I, I'm gonna be in the best percentage, or do you ever feel a little bit anxious, like okay, I do have one in a few months, I'm a little bit worried. So the truth is, I think eventually, 
depending on my habits, of course, it's, I mean, I don't wish it upon myself, but it's so, it's like, I don't know, I guess. I mean, if it comes back, I'm ready for it. I think, I think that's my mindset.